Hey everybody, it's Brian here. Hope you're having a great day so far. We're gonna get right into it. We're gonna start off with uh, some scriptures here out of Psalms, Psalms 34. And starting at verse four, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Verse six, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and rescues them. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous, and, he, and his ears are open to the cry. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. This verse is for some of you today, for sure. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Isn't Psalm 34 awesome? I love that song. It's one of my favorite. You know, the common denominator in that psalm, the Lord rescues, the Lord delivers. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord hears the cries of the righteous. I know I'm talking to the choir here, but you, you get to the point in your life, well, God, you, I got to have an answer. I see the I see the comments. I don't always comment on it because I'm, it's really a busy season for me, but I pray over everyone. I don't have anything to say that's profound from Brian, <laughs> third person. But I have stuff, the things to say that God has said. He hears the cry of the righteous. And the last one, he's close to the brokenhearted. There's several of you out there that are brokenhearted, more than several. Your heart has been crushed, been devastated, right? You're nodding right now. I know you are. The Lord is the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. I'm reading these verses today because we're living in unprecedented times in human history. You know, we're we're doing our jobs and doing our stuff we do every day, but we I have to realize I do sometimes when I'm not so busy. We're living in unprecedented biblical prophetic times never ever seen before since the beginning. The prophets of, of old would long and love to be in the times we are right now. Seeing all the prophecies that Isaiah, Ezekiel, and different ones prophesied almost 3,000 years ago are coming true. Imagine the prophet Ezekiel reading the headlines in the Middle East right now. I talked about that 3,000 years ago. It's coming, it's coming true. We are living in those days. What days are we living in? We're living in the pre-tribulation rapture days. And soon the tribulation will be here and we will be gone. And we won't be pre-tribulation rapture anymore because we will be raptured. <laughs> there will not be a pre-trib anymore. Because we, we won't be here. <laughs> it'll be after the rapture and during the tribulation. And that time is about here. It's it's here. It's at the door. It's pretty obvious. You guys all know this. I know you watch my videos and you, I say almost the same things, not every day, but it's just, it's pretty, it's pretty obvious, right? So what does God call for us as believers? If you're a born again believer, you have Jesus in your heart. If you're watching this video and you've never asked Jesus in your heart, you need to do it now before it's too late. What do you mean? Well, first of all, if you just die walking out the door, hit by a car, or whatever happens to or any of us, you'll be in hell instantly. I don't you, everybody, I don't want even to go into the details of hell. Everybody knows what it, we've read about what it's like. It's terrible. But if you ask Jesus in your heart and you walk out the door and you get killed, you're going to be, it says, absent from the physical body, present with the Lord. Where's the Lord at? He's in heaven. And he wants you to get saved. A lot of you watching this, you're already saved. I get it. 
This isn't relevant for you, but there's others out there that is very relevant for. We're li the things you see on TV that's going on, those of you out there who don't know the Lord, this has all been predicted in the Bible. Bible prophecy is coming true. You can look it up and do research yourself. But this is all pointing to the return of Jesus Christ in the clouds for his church at any moment. At any moment. Every day is overtime. We're in overtime. It's been four quarters and now we're in overtime. And overtime is going to just keep going and going until the fulfillment of the church is fulfilled. What's that? The number of the saved that God is going to save has been completed. And that's almost here. So I encourage you to get saved. And for those of you out there like myself who know the Lord, you're crushed in spirit. You're broken hearted. I only know one person that can fix a broken heart. And that's God. Give him your broken heart. Pick yourself up by the bootstraps. Get off the floor and go live your life. Because you're breathing oxygen today. You feel like you just can't go anymore. Why am I even here? You're here because God's called you for a reason to be here. And the enemy's trying to steal your crown. Don't let him steal your crown. He's not calling you to live a perfect life. That's impossible. It's impossible. He's called you to live an obedient life to the best of your ability in the Lord. So get up and do it. And if you're already living that obedient life, praise God, God's using you. He's using all of us. We're all in this together. We're all together in this. We're, we're on this boat called the earth. This earth is sinking. The Titanic's going down, but our rescue is coming. The lifeboat is coming. Jesus is coming in the clouds any moment. I want to get into some articles today about some things going on. I'm going to go through these pretty quick. Um, just this stuff we already know, but just another reminder in the news how close we are. All right. Let's see. Uh, this is going to be north. Let's see here if it comes up. Nope. Let's see. Oh, here, we'll just start here. Israel, Israel Hamam website. Probably butchered that. Russia fires warnings to Israel over Patriot missiles for Ukraine. The potential deal could sig significantly bolster Ukraine's air defense capabilities, drawing criticism from Russia's officials. This could, of course, have certain political consequences, they stated. So, Israel's got some missile systems they got from us that they don't use anymore because they've upgraded their missile defense systems, the Iron Dome, and they're going to sell or give these to Ukraine. Well, <laughs> think that's going to make Russia happy? What's Russia do in Ezekiel 38 and 39? It comes down to Israel. Huh, I wonder why. Some think it's for spoil. Take the S off of spoil. Oil. Are they coming down for oil? Is there oil and gas in Israel? There's gas off the coast. Huge gas fine. They're, they're searching for gas, uh, oil right now. There's some pockets of small oil, but nothing huge yet that we know of, okay? But is it that? Or are they kind of come down because they're going to defend Iran because Iran's going to get a little behind beat by Israel in the Psalms 83 war, and that draws them in? Could be. Or it could be they're just they're going to come down because they're tired of Israel, and they're going to join these other nations and take her out. They're like, we're done with you. We don't know exactly how it's going to play out. We might know more as we get closer to the the rapture. But if the rapture happened today, we wouldn't know. But we might we might know before the rapture, but we're not 100%. But my point is, Israel's giving or selling these weapon systems to Ukraine to shoot down aircraft, incoming missiles from Russia. Though I, that's not going to go over good in Moscow, is it? Um Here's another one. This is an Israeli. It's all the same one, same website. Israel Hamam. H A Y O M. Sorry about the pronunciation. Uh, Russia fires warnings to Israel over Patriot. Oh, I already did that one. I'm sorry. Uh, it, it downloaded twice. We we'll go to this one. Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> yeah. Remember that. Remember that Russian sub and a few of those ships who just kind of happened to be doing a little. Um, three hour tour past um, Florida a few weeks ago, remember? Oh, nothing to worry about here. They're nuclear subs, but they don't have nuclear weapons on them. 
I remember that. They actually said that. There's no nuclear weapons. It's just a training thing. They're going to Cuba. Remember? The Russian sub parked 100 miles off the coast of Florida with hypersonic nuclear missiles that can hit. Fly from the Atlantic off the coast of Florida, hit Washington State in five minutes. Nothing to see here. Well, guess what? Russia's submarine spotted on NATO's doorstep sparks woes. <laughs> you think? Oh my gosh, these people. Russia has twice deployed attack submarines to conduct missions around uh, Iris Sea since um, President Vladimir Putin launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February of 2022. The activities of the Russian Navy and in international wars have drawn increased attention in recent months. Last month, Russia deployed its nuclear-powered submarine, Kazan, warships, and other naval vessels to Caribbean for a planned military drills. That's what I just spoke about. According to the nonprofit nuclear threat, non Profit Nuclear Threat Initiative, NTI. The Russian Navy can, commands one of the world's largest submarine fleets with an estimated 58 vessels. Russia first sent a Kilo-class submarine, a diesel-electric attack submarine, which can fire Kabar cruise missiles toward the Irish Sea about 18 months ago. I said this before and I'll say it again. You know, while we're doing our thing living here and we're all worried about who's going to be president of the United States, here in the U.S., all while we're doing that, we're fighting back and forth with politics and your opinion matters, mine doesn't. The world's arming itself for through World War III. Yeah, you know, it's just like I said before, the, when they want to do something, the world powers, whoever they may be, especially in the U.S., they make a distraction over here, but over here is what's really going on. The world is arming itself. There's a nuclear submarine off NATO's coast, oh, off, the, off of Europe. You think, oh, big deal, one submarine. <laughs> one submarine. There's more firepower in one nuclear submarine than all the bombs of World War I and World War II combined that were dropped out of one submarine. Actually, way more than that. The bombs they have on those submarines make uh, the one dropped in Japan look like a firecracker. I'm making this stuff up. And they fire those things up. Oh, it's just one missile, but it goes and it breaks into pieces. Bad terminology, not very scientific here. But there's maybe 10 warheads and they all go to different targets. And each one of those warheads is 10 to 15, 20 times stronger than the one dropped on Japan or 100 times. Who knows? Just one. One nuclear submarine could take out every single city in California, Oregon, and Washington with one strike. One submarine. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. And how many you got? 58. And it doesn't matter if they're nuclear powered or diesel powered. They're still, still carrying what you... Come on. Yeah. Are we living in the last days? Is this the last days? I don't know. Who knows? Really? Ugh. Here's another one. See if it hey, it came up. This is on the Wall Street Journal website. Satellite images show expansion of suspected Chinese spy base in Cuba. Analysts identified four electronic eavesdropping stations, including a previously unreported site near the U.S. Navy base. <laughs> they put them next to our Navy base. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, Larry. You know, there's, Larry and his friend are on guard duty at the base. Hey, Larry, what's that over there? I've never seen that before. Oh, that's a Club Med they're building. Really? It's got a, a satellite dish the size of a football field. Oh, that's nothing. That's, that's just for video games at night at the Club Med. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Really? <laughs> gosh. Oh, uh, this one was for yesterday, but I didn't read it. I don't think I did. Oh, let's see this. One. Maybe this will come up. <laughs> God, folks, come on. You, I, I, you know, we are so close. And I, you know, why I do these every single day. I try to uh, make a commitment to do these every day, except maybe Sundays, unless there's something comes up. Because every day, it helps me when I prepare for these. It helps me. 
to focus on what's really going on. Oh, oh yeah, I've had a horrible night. I start looking at these, I start reading these articles. I start looking up scripture. It's like, oh yeah, I forgot. We're almost out of here. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> so I do these every day that I can, God willing, to remind us that you already know all this stuff. Like I said, many of you could do your own podcast. I'm not giving you new insight to anything. I'm just reminding myself and hopefully you and others that we are the saints of the most high God. We are the church upon this rock. I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That church is about to go to heaven. It's just these podcasts are just reminders of who we are and where we're going. And it's very, very soon. Very soon. Oh, my. It's like. See if I can. Uh, Here, let's see if this will come up. No, nope, I'll just I just read the title. It won't come up. North Korea says it tested ballistic missiles with super large warheads. I can't get the article to come up. I read this yesterday. I'm not sure why it won't come up now, but nope. They have um, warheads. These aren't nuclear, supposedly. That are four thousand. Excuse me, four ton warheads. See so how many pounds? See what was it yesterday? Yeah, 8,000 pounds warheads. You know, okay, there's we have that one over here in the U.S. called the mother of all bombs, Moab. I can't remember. It's 12, 14,000 pounds of explosive. This is like 8,000 pounds. So big deal. Well, let's just say one lands in Hawaii, downtown Honolulu. Downtown Honolulu is gone. <laughs> okay, it's gone. But you know they have nukes. You know, we think North Korea is this little old back nation, third world nation doesn't have anything. No, they have high tech stuff. Their people are suffering. Their people are starving to death in their streets. They're dying everywhere. They're not getting food. They're not getting shit. The government doesn't care about them. But the military, it's top notch. Why? It's getting its weapons from China, from Russia, from Iran. And then they're sending their tech over to Iran. They're sending their tech over to Russia to help the Ukraine war with the Russians. They're all in this together. When you see these leaders going to each other's countries, visiting, uh, Putin visited China and so forth, they're not over there to talk about their golf game. They're over there to talk about the downfall of the United States of America and the downfall of Israel. The big Satan and little Satan. Well, you know what? The big Satan and little Satan combined can't beat our God. Not even close. Jesus, Revelation 19 speaks. All he has to do is talk. What does he say? I don't know. But a sword comes out of his mouth and defeats the armies of the world. He just speaks. A hundred trillion nuclear weapons going off at the same time are nothing compared to Jesus just speaking. And if he can speak and defeat the armies with one word, what can he do for us as believers? The righteous cry out and God hears them and delivers them out of all their troubles. Now, when he delivers, is it out of all their troubles the way you think he needs to be delivered out of all your troubles? James chapter one, verse uh, verse two, consider all joy, my brother, when you encounter various trials and the testing of faith produces endurance. And it goes on. I hate that verse. <laughs> consider all joy. James, come over here. I want to talk to you. When I get to heaven, I'm going to have a talk with James. <laughs> get over here. I think you... I think you, you messed up on this one. <laughs> yeah, I'm just joking. Of course he didn't. It's from the Holy Spirit. Folks, we're almost out of here. I'm going to finish with this. Um, get there. Uh, where is it? Oh, here it is. You know, when we're doing all we can to get through life, and you feel like you can't do anymore because you're just exhausted, then let God fight for you. I can't do it anymore, God. I'm done. I'm done. I've, I've had it. Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 22. You shall not fear them, 
You should not fear the world. I'm just going to put in my own words here. You should not fear all these wars, rumors of wars. You should not fear losing your job. You should not fear getting COVID. You should not fear having the shot. You should not fear whatever they throw at you for. It is the Lord your God who fights for you. Deuteronomy 20 verse 4. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies against the world system, against being mistreated at work, against somebody who's falsely accusing you, against the fear of Armageddon at any moment. He fights for you against your enemies to give you the victory. Who the victory? You the victory. Me the victory. We Technically, not technically, factually, we've already won. We just haven't received a reward, but we've already won. If you're saved, you've already won. What's in the world can do to you? You're going to go to heaven if you die. They persecute you and kill you. You go to heaven. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. So what are they going to do? Fear God who can kill the body and the soul and cast it into hell. We're, we're the apple of God's eye. He loves us. Man, does he love us. He loved us so much he sent his son. Would you send your child to die for people that treated Jesus the way they treated him? Knowing that was going to happen before it happened, you knew how they were going to be treating treating your best person, I mean your son who you love. He's loved his son forever and ever. They've been together forever and ever. And you know that he's going to be treated this way and you're still going to do it. How much love does the father have for us? We're going to find out. One second, guys. I'm looking for something I saw this morning. In Ephesians 6, 16, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. One man of you puts to flight a thousand, since it is the Lord your God who fights for you, just as he promised you. One man, one person put the fight of a thousand if God's with him. David killed a giant when he was ranked 16 years old, just guessing. The giant was 10 feet. Goliath was over 10 feet tall, probably around 10 feet. 10 feet. Six, 700 pound giant, 800 pound. A Nephilim. Not just a normal human tall, but a Nephilim giant. The strength of 50 men. Who knows? The spear, this the tip of his spear weighed as much as a bowling ball, which is 16 pounds. His shield weighed 100 and almost 150 pounds. The poor, the guy had to carry that shield bearer. <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> I mean, oh, he must have had spinal problems. This is the God who's for us. You may feel insignificant this morning. You may feel small. God's not going to use you. You're the mightiest one in the army of God. When you think you can't do it and you think you're this, that, and you're weak, then you're strong. Folks, we are almost out of here. War's heating up all over the world. They're putting weapons off our coastlines. They're talking about a new bird flu vaccine. Moderna was just awarded 100 and something million to create a vaccine for the bird flu for this winter. They're gearing up for something, but you know what you need to gear up for? The rapture, because it's almost here. I can't believe I can say this with confidence. We're almost out of here. It's amazing. You guys have a great day, and I'm going to see you in the clouds very soon. This is Brian out. Bye-bye.